Recently, Nelson City Council finalized its annual budget for the 1992 calendar year. After a number of meetings agonizing over how best to maintain and improve on the present level of providing municipal services in the face of severe revenue cuts, mainly due to the impact of the new provincial government budget. As you know, the province has eliminated the supplementary homeowner grant, which will negatively impact directly on the residential homeowner in the form of a 2% tax increase on the average. In addition, the traditional provincial government grants have been reduced by some $66,700. These funds have been traditionally used by this city to supplement expenditures for basic infrastructure maintenance, upgrading, and renewal. In addition, the council has had to deal with the annual increase in the cost of doing business, including the increase in the cost of goods and services, wage settlements, and government license fees. Council has had to address these problems through a combination of a 7% tax increase and reduction of expenditures in a number of areas. In Council's 1991 financial planning meetings, a deliberate decision was made to begin to eliminate the dependency of groups and individuals on the city's grant and aid budget, and as well to reduce funding to a number of very worthwhile community organizations, which, by the way, make a significant contribution to the Nelson economy as a whole. In the 1992 budget, Council has eliminated the city's grant and aid budget and have reduced funding to community groups and organizations as follows. The Chamber of Commerce was reduced from 40,000 in 1991 to 35,000 in 1992, a reduction of approximately 14.3%. The Chamber had requested this year $50,000. Post-secondary education was reduced from 30,000, which was given to UIC, NUC in 1991, to 15,000 in 1992, a reduction of 50%. The Capitol Theatre was reduced from 60,000 in 1990 to 50,000 in 1992, pardon me, 55,000, which is a reduction of approximately 8.5%. The Kootenai School of the Arts had requested 48,000 for 1992, and they received no direct funding from this city. The elimination and a reduction of these grants were not made without a lot of agonizing. The Capitol Theatre, for example, is a city-owned facility the same as the Civic Centre complex. The city's subsidy to the Capitol Theatre amounts to approximately 30% of the total cost of operating this theatre, as compared to an estimated 60% subsidy, or $275,000 per year for the Civic Centre complex. These are both very valuable assets to our community, both in terms of being an economic generator and enriching the quality of life in our Nelson area. In 1991, the city budget for new road construction, as well as street and sidewalk maintenance, was the largest the city had seen in over 15 years. This year, Council has again made streets, sidewalks, and underground services a priority. Council is justifiably concerned about road building and resource development in areas adjacent to our watershed, for example, in Alaska Creek. As a purveyor of water under the provisions of the BC Health Act, it is city council who are responsible accountable and liable for the quality and quantity of water in the city's watershed areas. Any activity that negatively impacts on the city's watershed, and particularly on the quantity and quality of water, or the city's water supply system, any financial costs or liability for damages will rest entirely with this city. There is no requirement nor obligation on the part of any developer, contractor, or the senior governments to be responsible for or otherwise compensate this city for any damages to the water quality or to the city's water system as a result of any activity in or adjacent to the city's watersheds. It would be irresponsible for council not to be concerned about protecting the citizen's interest in respect of any activity that will impact upon the watershed. Ministry of Health Studies continue to show that Nelson is the only major community in the Kootenays to have pure water. We do believe and we think we have the best water in the country, and we do intend to keep it that way. The Streetcar 23 project is the responsibility of the Nelson Electrical Tramway Society. This project has received the support, financial and otherwise, from senior levels of government in the form of major grants and employment assistance programs. Government-supported studies have indicated that the Streetcar 23 project, when completed and operating, will be a significant economic generator for the city, particularly as it does relate to tourism. The City of Nelson has continually supported the efforts of the Tramway Society and in fact, many city employees have volunteered their personal time towards completion of this fine project. Council has allowed city equipment to be used to assist the Society in achieving its completion goal. 
any funds expended by the city for this project are being paid back to the city by the Electric Tramway Society. Another major area of concern for Council is the Nelson business community. The provincial and global downturn in the economy is creating some difficult times for some Nelson businesses. The Council has been doing all it can to assist business within the legislative authority given to it. And for example, the city did play a significant role in ensuring that Kootenai Manufacturing Company was able to locate its logging equipment manufacturing company in Nelson. The city has also assisted a number of other businesses in this community, such as Nelson Industries Limited, for example, leasing them city land at very reasonable lease rates. However, try as we may, the Council and the Economic Development Commission have been unable to offset the global trends towards economic downturn. A major issue to citizens of our community is the proper development of our waterfront area. The official community plan for Nelson does provide for a plan for waterfront development, and while some of these plans have been addressed, for example, building the wharf, the soccer field, and a walkway along part of our waterfront, it is obvious that the plan is outdated. We as a council are now addressing the waterfront development issue by a complete review and update of the official community plan with a major focus on a new water development, waterfront development plan. Some public meetings have been already taking place and are more a plan to get public input and ideas for long-term development of the waterfront and in fact the city in general. In conclusion, I would like to reiterate that pre-budget meetings of council have been open to the media and the public since 1991. The total budget and its individual revenues, expenditures have been provided in open council meetings and are duly reported in our local media. This council has tried very hard to keep the citizens informed and will continue to hold open meetings as evidence, for example, by the Rosemont Public Park meeting, the Waterfront Golf Driving Range meetings, and the official community plan update meetings which are going on on a monthly basis. I do encourage any citizen to come to see myself or other members of council or a city administrator to discuss your concerns. If the provincial and global economic downturn continues, we are looking at very hard times in 1993 from a municipal budget point of view. Now, if we are to hold the line on municipal taxes while at the same time maintaining the same levels of municipal services that our citizens have come to expect, then all of us will have to try harder to do more with less if we are going to hold the line on taxes and expenditures. I want to close on a positive note. Our local economy continues to be strong despite the pressures from the provincial or global downward trends. Building permits in Nelson are up over last year and new development continues. The types of development we are getting help to diversify our economy to cushion the blow against any major impact from provincial or global trends. Nelson is one of the fastest growing communities in the Kootenays. While this increased development growth may put short-term pressures on our services and on our budget, the longer-term benefits will accrue in the form of a stronger economic base and a more equitable distribution of the municipal tax load. Nelson is now world-renowned as the place to live, and notwithstanding our beautiful community, our setting, our magnificent scenery, our pristine waters, and our unbeatable quality of life, it is the people of this community that have earned us this reputation by being the most hospitable, friendly and harmonious community. Let us keep it that way by continuing to work hard and together to that end. Thank you very much.